Ken DeCoster is here from the Sheriff's Office and Crime Stoppers. How are you? Riley, I'm fine. How are you? Doing very well. Got some nice, got some heat coming here. Yeah, it feels, like, feels like July or August. It's going to feel that way by, oh, well, let's start, oh, maybe around tomorrow when we're looking at 90, 90 Thursday, 90 Friday, 90 Saturday. Wow. Yeah, we are in for that warm-up, so uh, I'm going to run out and see if I can't uh, Jimmy open the gate at Magic Waters later. <laughs> Let a few close friends in for some fun. Um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, the Sheriff will be joining us tomorrow on this show. Yes, indeed. Uh, Sheriff of Gary Caruana will be uh, here uh, at WROK with Riley to discuss um, the uh, budget dilemma facing the Winnebago County Board and the Sheriff's Office, and um, we'll get the Sheriff's uh, insight as to what needs to be done and what he thinks should be done, etc. All right, looking forward to that. Uh, it's been a while since he's been into a uh, chat with us, so we'll get the lowdown on that and right. uh, plenty of other things uh, involving law enforcement. Did you uh, hear about the earthquake in southern Illinois today? We just touched on that. I, I saw somebody tweet that, say that we, we got something. Where was it? It was, um, I'll read a tweet from, uh, actually, former WREX meteorologist Morgan Kochmeyer. That's now whose over, tweet I saw. Over up. at uh, WGN-TV doing the morning show over there. Morgan is a... Uh, uh, a lovely lady and uh, does a great job Very talented. as a meteorologist. Uh, she says a 3.8 magnitude earthquake was recorded near Albion, Illinois this morning. The earthquake reportedly hit around 6.45 a.m., about seven miles from Albion. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, A-L-B-I-O-N. Uh, Albion is a city located south of the center of Edwards County, which is about five hours from Chicago. Uh, no further information at this time. This is a developing story. Check back for details. But uh, it's near the Indiana border, not far from uh, from the state of Kentucky. Uh, and no injuries that uh, I'm aware of. It got me to thinking about, do you remember feeling any earthquake in this area? Yeah, yeah. There was one three or four years ago that we that we had. And it, it, the only reason I felt that it was it happened shortly after I'd gotten up to come in here. Mm -hmm. So I want to say it was 3.45, 3.30, 3.45 in the morning. You know, I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I hadn't thought about that one. But uh, there was an earthquake that was felt in northern Illinois. I want to say it was in February of uh, maybe 2011, 2012. That sounds about right. Um, and I, I remember f I was uh, working at a, another radio station at the time, and I remember I was in the newsroom, and Riley, I thought a snowplow hit our building. I'm like, what in the world was that? The earthquake I remember clearly uh, feeling happened 30 years ago. It was June of 1987. And I was home at the time. I was living uh, in an apartment on uh, on Melrose Street in uh, Northwest Rockford. And this was about 6.30, 6.45 p.m. on a beautiful June evening. And I remember sitting down on my couch having a cold one. And as God is my witness, I remember I had these big speakers at the time. And my, my stereo speakers started to shake. <laughs> And I'm thinking, my wow. God, what am I drinking? It's like on a TV show where you, where you look at the bottle and then throw it. No. And I, uh, within a couple of minutes, I got a phone call from WROK Radio, uh, you know, prior to social media, uh, saying people were calling the radio station saying they felt an earthquake. Right. And... Um, Remember going back in the station and uh, and gathering some news, but uh, and luckily, unlike California, there's no follow up. Right. It's not well. I better get there because yeah, I know more shocks are coming. Right. You know, it's a one and done kind of thing. And the one that happened in 2011, like I said, I was up and I was I was getting dressed, and I thought one of the kids had fallen out of bed. Wow. I heard a th you know, yeah. and and there was that slight movement right. of of human what felt like human weight on the floor. And I went, you know, I'm opening up bedroom doors and looking at they're sound asleep. Amy sound asleep. Right. I'm thinking. Earthquake? Nah, I take a shower while I get in here, and my, my timeline is just uh, blown up on Twitter <laughs> and everything else. Yeah, Illinois had some sort of earthquake. Well, in the 1987 earthquake, when you and I uh, were both working here at WROK, I remember calling you and saying, Riley, there's been an earthquake. Ken, come on. Come on. 
Cut out the drinking. Yeah, really. We're, we're not in San Francisco, Ken. Come on. That couldn't happen here. I do remember Dr. Ivan Browning, though, back in 1989, saying that we were due. The new Madrid fault right. was due for a big one. Yes. Big one. Now, Dr. Ivan Browning is long since gone, mm -hmm. and it didn't really happen, but he kept drawing uh, a parallel between the one that happened in the early part of the 1800s that actually rang church bells in Boston. Wow. We had an earthquake on the New Madrid Fault, Southern Illinois, Missouri sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reports were it rang church bells in Boston. Wow. Yeah, I could do without that. Oh, I could do without all that goes along <laughs> with that. I don't know what that would, uh, what magnitude that would be, but I think yeah. that would be a problem now. And I'm still, you know, if I'm living out in Northern California, I'm... Uh I don't know if I'd ever get used yeah, to it. Yeah, I, I just, I could not get used to it. No, no, it'd, it'd be the same thing. A tsunami? A uh, what? What? What do you people have here? <laughs> I'm going back where there's corn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you have law enforcement matters you brought with you? Indeed, I do, Riley. Uh, this past weekend, the Winnebago County Sheriff's Department, the State Police, Rockford Police, Loves Park Police, South Beloit, Village of Winnebago, and the Department of Homeland Security conducted a two-day saturation patrol Homeland Security provided a helicopter for the detail. A Rockford police officer flew with the Homeland Security uh, chopper as a spotter. The two-day saturation detail resulted in the following. Uh, 10 arrests, 166 traffic stops, uh, 66 citations given out, 140 warnings. Uh, 11 people were busted for driving on a suspended or revoked license. Three people were arrested for driving under the influence. There were 43 vehicles searched, nine arrest warrants served. As far as uh, drug recovery, uh, 182.3 grams of cannabis recovered, 8.79 grams of cocaine, wow. 4.8 grams of heroin, uh, multiple pills of prescription medicine recovered, a couple of ecstasy pills. Uh, three handguns were recovered, including one gun that had uh, defaced serial numbers, and there were a total of six vehicle pursuits. Also, during this detail over the weekend, police made contact with individuals who provided relevant information related to ongoing violent criminal investigations being conducted by both Rockford Police and Winnebago County Sheriff's Police. Once again, the use of the Homeland Security helicopter was instrumental in the apprehension of several subjects during the detail. Nice. Sheriff Carawan expressed his thanks to the participating law enforcement agencies for their manpower and their expertise. And really another example, people talk about the, um, the uh, law enforcement agencies uh, being kind of separate entities, which they are, but there is a lot of collaboration going on Absolutely. here in Northern Illinois. Rockford Police, Winnebago County Sheriff's Police, State Police, Loves Park. Interagency cooperation. Right. Right. And it's, it's great to see it because, you know, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, a, a number of red flags went up years ago about, you know, agencies are finding things but not sharing. It's a territory sort of thing. It's nice to see that kind of cooperation. Riley, on uh, Saturday, August 26th, shortly after 6 p.m., patrol officers from the Rockford Police Department responded to the 300 block of Underwood Street in reference to a shooting. When they arrived, officers found a 25-year-old male victim later identified as Marlon Pendleton, suffering from a gunshot wound to his back. He was transported to a local hospital where he died as a result of his injuries. Detectives from the Rockford Police Department have been conducting a follow-up investigation. The investigation has been reviewed by the Winnebago County State's Attorney's Office. As a result, charges have been authorized and a warrant has been obtained for the murder suspect, 21-year-old Tracy Barfield Jr. of Rockford. The warrant has not been served. Barfield is currently at large. He is also wanted on an unrelated probation violation warrant. Uh, again, 21-year-old guy named Tracy Barfield Jr. wanted for first-degree murder. Uh, his bond is $1 million. He's also wanted for a probation violation for unlawful use of weapons. And that bond is $500,000. Rockford police are asking for the public's assistance in finding, uh, Jess, or pardon me, Tracy Barfield Jr. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Investigations Bureau at 779-500-6551 or Crime Stoppers, 815-963-7867. And I should tell you, uh, when something, uh, a char a guy's wanted for a first-degree murder charge, um... Uh, that would qualify for the $1,000 reward. If I you thought have, that would be on the higher end of the reward scale. If you have information that uh, results in the arrest of Tracy Barfield Jr., give us a call at 815-963-7867. Uh, we're also looking for Darius Foster. 
is a black male, 5'10", 180 pounds. He's wanted for aggravated assault with a handgun. Curtis Walton is a 26-year-old black male. He's 5'10", 180 pounds. He is wanted for unlawful possession of a credit card. And finally, Kasten Turpin is a white male, 24 years old, 5'10", 180 pounds. He is wanted for several warrants, including uh, domestic battery. If you have any information on the whereabouts of any of these individuals, give us a call at Rockford Crime Stoppers, 815-963-7867, or call us toll-free at 888-769-STOP. That's right, or rockfordcrimestoppers.com to find out more, too. One more, uh, one more piece of law enforcement-related uh, material. An Oakland woman scared off a mugger by faking a seizure after the criminal gave her a terrifying note saying there were guns pointed at her. Julie Draglin claims the mugger was behind her on a BART train Saturday afternoon, handed a note saying two guns were currently being pointed at her and asking for her belongings. This is according to the San Francisco Chronicle. Quote, there are two guns pointed at you now. If you want to live, hand back your wallet and phone now. Do not turn around and be discreet. Do not turn around until after you have left the Civic Center and you will live. Instead of following the criminal's instruction, Ms. Draglin faked a seizure prompting the attention of people nearby and forcing the mugger to flee the scene. Wow. When I read the note, I started freaking out, she told the SF Gate in an interview, adding she also tried to secretly say help me to a man standing nearby, but the guy didn't get it. I did not want to give up my stuff, but I had no idea who was behind me, she said. She then faked the seizure. I probably look ridiculous. I slumped sideways. I started shaking and crying. I closed my eyes, increased the vigor so people would pay attention. A couple quickly came to her help. She handed them the threatening note. She suspects the mugger was an older woman with a suitcase. Draglin said she got the idea of faking a seizure from the TV series Law & Order. I think it had something to do with watching a lot of Law & Order. I saw that in an episode, and I have to admit, I was pretty impressed with myself. Wow. <laughs> That's ingenuity. Uh, I, um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember seeing uh, anything employable from, uh, from Law & Order no. that I could use. You know, it's... Riley, I, I, I must, part of me, if if I was confronted and asked to give up my wallet and my my phone, whatever else I had on me, a part of me wants to resist and fight. But they say, you know, the but police. Part say, of me doesn't want to die over right, a phone the, and, a, the, and a wallet. There you go. Yeah. So uh, apparently, the next best thing, faking the Fake seizure, seizure from Law and Order. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that doo -doo dropped in there too. Ken, good to see you. Thanks for the time.